concept of universalization comes from work that I have done with Ted Hewitt, where we define universalization as the reality that in this century, it's not going to be remembered by globalization, but it will be remembered by one world within the universe. And that a central theme is whether or not cooperation is our only way to sustain humanity in this new construct. So our resolution is, can universalization promote global peace through cooperation? So let's debate. two-sided debate. I feel like it could honestly go either way because there's strong pros and strong cons to both sides. Universalization is the act of all the nations on earth, all the people coming together to tackle problems that affect us all. It's the concept of expanding our earth not only on the geographical scale where we're just expanding our borders to other planets but also on the political scale where we're incorporating more of a universalized society and incorporating that with other planets where we see past the boundaries of each of our countries. We work together to go for the greater goal. Whereas universalization, everyone is equal going into space and everyone gets equal benefits out of it. We need to find a way to agree on the new laws in space that, that are helpful and that everyone can cooperate and agree on. This is not about that latter construct. This is about a construct of cooperation where we want to embrace diversity, we want to embrace inclusion, we want to embrace all the disciplines from engineers to artists to build a society that will really take advantage of the universe but also ensure that we survive. We want every individual involved in every matter because we're humans and this is our world. We need to rule it together. So this debate on universalization to me goes hand in hand with what the quest is and that's to bring opportunities to teachers and students all over the world with the topic being space science. Most countries don't even have a space program. There's only the major government players in the private industry. There's only countries like um, Russia, the United States, um, China, India's making its way. There's barely any countries that have a sustainable space program. And we need to change that. We want um, all countries to be able to to have that international collaboration that's going to bring us all together for a common cause. Space is a different frontier. You know, they often talk about it as the final frontier. We don't want it to be the final frontier. We want it to be the next frontier. So if we're going to do that, what about the whole aspect of how are we going to live and work together in this new construct where the world is now part of a much larger space called the universe? And I think the opportunity to put it in the hands of our next generation of leaders is what we need to do because they're the ones who are going to help us really resolve because it's their world. They need to own this. No. Not everyone doesn't agree on everything, so we have to have separation. We have to maintain borders and we have to maintain our own identities. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't cooperate. There could be a risk of starting a war. It's always been a desire for humans to want to be the best, the top. Humans are very competitive. Likely chance that they there would be fighting over who gets the resources, who gets the land, etc., etc. Now that I've thought about how there's such a, a big political and social aspect to it, um, and how that's such a major role and that has to be supported as well if we're ever going to do this. We keep these things that make us different, however we find a way to not cause problems with them. We find roles that include all of us, no matter what a religion, race, or language is, so that it benefits everybody. It's the most altruistic approach. I really want to do something more. I want to just get out there and um, advocate, advocate for it. And so this debate opportunity and what ISDC has done through the EIS team, I think has taken that bold step of bringing it into the domain of young adults. If what we've done is, is created that energy and that interest. It's about, uh, it's about starting the conversation. Winning a competition at um, something like this 
Yes, it's definitely great, but it doesn't compare to the impact we could make by spreading this word out. Many people around who will be watching us can get to know about universalization and we can spread this idea. It was a really interesting topic that a lot of people, we really need to explore more in depth if we want to consider going to space and living there and setting up stations there. Figuring out a plan for universalization space is something that's really important and is really impacting us right now. One thing in the classroom that you want to do is try to ignite. That's a good word for it. And I, I like that because it actually is to put them on fire. All humans must work together for a common goal. It's our sense of unity that's going to allow this to work. And if we can get that sense of unity to be all inclusive of every country, then universalization is going to be our future. When you see these students speaking about it and using the terms that we use as if it was always their term, I don't think there's anything more rewarding, quite honestly. I'd say it come out very nicely because it's, it's been great. It's been great. Cooperation. Great. Right, so. And compassion. And compassion. And compassion, yes. Universalization, in my point of view, will change the world to a better place and a whole new league of problem solving together.